found some interesting information in the 1611 King James Bible, but before I get to it, I'm going to continue in the direction of the previous two videos. If you haven't seen them, and to understand what it is I'm talking about here, links to all the videos in this series are below. The thing about working with these De Beer codes is that in many cases it's predictable, meaning that once you know what you're looking for, the information just falls into place. For example, Psalm 57. As Alexander Wallace pointed out, 57 is equal to 17 plus 40, De Beer's number. Looking closer at Psalm 57, the verse reference numbers are 1 and 7, or 17. If we then start counting the following lines, 18, 19, and so on, when we get to 40, there's the word R, A-R-E, next to the word spears. The word R is pronounced just like the letter R, and R is the 17th letter. So 17 on the 40th line next to the word spears is 1740 spears. Also, there's 24 words before spears. 24 equals the number of letters in Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford, but also in French, 2 is pronounced de, and in Dutch or German, 4 is pronounced vier, de vier, or 2, 4. This is all found in Psalm 57, verse 4. 57 equals 17 plus 40, and 4 in German is vier, and directly above the number 4 is truth, and de Vere's motto was viro nihil virius, nothing truer than truth. Now the concept of God and De Vere is found encoded all throughout the sonnets. In this video, John D's Secret Patron Revealed Wall explains how De Vere exemplifies and registers his name in numbers with 1740. As has been shown, this number turns up in the sonnets first folio in the 1611 King James Bible and other works contemporary to the time. In previous videos, I've gone over how the number 12 was used to attach De Vere's name to a word or phrase because 12 was equal to the number of letters in Edward De Vere and Earl of Oxford. The number 12 is also significant because of its appearance in the Bible, Greek myth, astrology, and so on. I haven't read somewhere that 12 is God's number. If we look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 17, there's 40 words, the 40th being ever or evir. Ever is also an anagram of vir. Also, in verse 24, the 17th word is ever. Again, 24 or 2 4 is de Vere, and there's 24 letters in Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford. In the 11th and 12th videos, I showed how the words shake and spear and shaking of a spear in Isaiah chapter 2, Psalm 46, and Job 41 were connected to de Vere by number. I'm going to return to Isaiah, this time to chapter 19. Remember, 19 is T or Tau, the cross on which Christ was crucified. It's arguably the single most important letter in all these codes, and unlocks the sonnet's dedication demonstrated by Alexander Waugh in his videos Where is Shakespeare Really Buried? Looking at verse 17, just above it is the word shaketh, an allusion to Shakespeare. Counting the letters beginning from verse number 17, the fourth letter is T, 1740. So just below shaketh is 1740, another example of 1740 or Edward de Vere in Shakespeare. And to confirm this, if we count the number of lines beginning from the top, shaketh is on the 43rd line, with the repeated count 43 equals VV, De Vere's double V initials. In the 11th video, I mentioned the Shem HaMeferash, or 72-fold name of God. Psalm 72 begins with a G for God, and the verse reference numbers equal 19, or Tau, the cross. Looking at verse 17, count 19 letters. The 19th letter begins the word for, F-O-R. Again, 19 is T, so this can be read as 17 for T. And it's next to the word ever or evir. Following 17 for T evir, it reads, His name shall be continued as long as the sun. Looking at the number for verse 19, it sits right above between the words for and ever. 19 is the letter T, so this can read 40 evir. Counting from the top of the page, shake begins the twelfth line. Again, there's twelve letters in Edward de Vere. Between it and the verse number for 17, there's 14 words. In classical Greek, eta was used for the long vowel e. Lowercase eta is drawn like a lowercase n. So the n in 14 is read like an e. 
and beginning with the verse number reading upwards, we get 1740 Shake. Again, Oxford's number and Shakespeare. And to confirm that we're talking about Oxford, if we count from Ever or Evere in verse 17, the Ever in verse 19 is 43 words. Again, with the repeated count, 43 equals VV. I thought Psalm 100 would have something in it because 100 equals the abbreviated name for Edward V. Vere and also shows up in the sonnets with the De Vere double V. The verse reference numbers have 1 and 3 on the same line, so I was thinking maybe that could be read as 13 plus 4 for 17. I thought the numbers could be added like that because of the way they're set up. The number 4 is right in the middle of for his greatness and for his power. 4, F-O-R, is pronounced the same way as the number 4, so it's 4, 4, 4, or veer 3 times. 4 times 3 equals 12, but also 4, 3, or 43 equals V-V, using the repeated count. Also, after the number 4, it says, and for his power. This is alluding to something strong, and in Latin, strong is four T's, a word for de veer that's turned up repeatedly in the sonnets and first folio. Now if we count 17 lines, it reads for the, again H or Ita is pronounced as an E, so this reads 1740. This is in verse 5, which in Roman numerals is the letter V for Vir. Count 24 letters, or 24 for de Vir, and it reads is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Remember Oxford's motto, nothing truer than truth. So this is saying 1740 De Vere is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, where David kills Goliath, there's several references to De Vere as Shakespeare. Again, he was the 17th Earl of Oxford, also known as 40. Chapter 17 has 58 verses. 5 times 8 equals 40. 5 times 8 equaling 40 is also used in the sonnets in first folio. At the top is a single verse reference number 55, with Roman numerals 55, five, not 55, but 55 five is written VV. This is also used in the sonnets and elsewhere in the Bible. Counting all the lines, verse 7 is on the 29th. Also, the verse totals 29 words, with Gematria 29 equals EDV for Edward de Vere. If we look above the verse number for seven, there's the word tween, and there's a play going on with this word seven tween or seventeen. In Greek, the lowercase letters for epsilon and omega are the same character. The epsilons turned on its side, and manipulating the same character to get another one is done in John Dee's Monus Hieroglyphica. After seventeen, if we count seventeen letters, there's the word spear. Also after 17, spears is the 14th word. Remember, 14 can be read as 4T because the Greek lowercase eta looks like a lowercase n, so this reads 1740 spears. On the next page of chapter 17, the word spear is printed two more times in verses 45 and 47. First, in verse 45, 4 times 5 is 20, or V with gematria, and when we count, spear is the 17th word, 17 spear. Counting the lines, on line 34 we get the word ver, V-E-R, which I'm going to get into later in this video. If we keep counting, when we get to line 43, we get the and symbol, but the first word is actually spear. With the repeated count, 43 equals VV, and 2 Bs equal 40. If we count the number of lines after the word spear, there's 17. So reading from the last line up, we have 1740. Looking at verse 47, if we spell the number out this way, 4T7, if both numbers share the letter T, and we read it right to left and left to right, it reads 7T4T, T, which is another way of saying and encoding 1740. Then if we count the words, not including the and symbol, but only the words, spear is the 14th. Again, when spelled out, 14 can be read as 4T because the letter N looks like the Greek lowercase eta. Also notice after spear are the words for the or 4T, so we have 40 spear 40. 
four in German is Vier, and four times in First Samuel chapter 17, the word spear is connected to the Vier's numbers 17 and 40. In videos 9 and 12, I bring up the number 34, but I'm starting to think that like 1740 and the number 12, it too is particularly significant. Sure, 3 times 4 is 12, but more importantly with the repeated count, 34 equals LL. I talk about it in the ninth video, but I'll go over some of it again. In Hebrew, the word God, small g, is pronounced L, E, L. The two gods represented here by L, L are the gods Jehovah and Jesus. How this connects to Debir is, Jehovah and Jesus have their basis in Judaism. Jehovah is the Hebrew God, and Jesus, the Christian God, was Hebrew. Hebrew, as I have repeated many times, is read from right to left. When we read the number 34, as if it were Hebrew from right to left, it's 43. And when we look up the number 43 using the repeated count, 43 is equal to 2 V's for a devir. Also with gematria, V is equal to 20, so 2 V's equal 40, which I've already explained. So through number, there's a devir connection to God and Jesus by the number 34. A couple quick examples are, in the King James Bible, chapter 19 from the Gospel of John, verse 34. The whole verse is structured by Devere numbers. 34 begins on the 40th line. There's 24 letters, 24 is Devere. After the 24 letters is a spear. Count 17 letters, then there's the word fourth. In classical Greek, H or Eta is pronounced E, so this reads 4T. Altogether, 34 or read right to left with the repeated count 43 or VV, followed by 24 letters for Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford, or 24 de Vere, then a spear 1740. In other examples in the sonnets, remember de Vere's double V initials begin 17 different sonnets because he's the 17th Earl of Oxford, and two V's with gematria equals 40, so 1740. I also looked at Numbers 34 in the Bible. There's no shake or spear references, but there are Devere ones. It's 29 verses, with Gematria 29 equals EDV for Edward Devere. The verse reference numbers are 1 and 16, equaling 17. If we count 17 lines, we land on the number 4, or Vere, just above the word THE in the letter S. So we have 17 four T's because H or ETA is pronounced E. Also, when we count the words for verse 17, the tenth word is divide. If we divide 10, we get 5 and 5, or with Roman numerals V and V. With gematria, V is equal to 20, and 2 V is equal 40, so 1740. Now I want to delve into something else. Do I believe De Vere was Shakespeare? I haven't really bought into the Prince Tudor theory that Oxford was a son of Queen Elizabeth and therefore a prince or king. I know this hasn't anything to do with the Shakespeare authorship question but I'm bringing it up because of some interesting things I found. In these last few videos, I go over how De Vere's Shakespeare is encoded in the 1611 King James Bible. Now I want to return to the last page of the book of Job, where there's a few Oxford clues that I'll go over again. In video 12, I explain the De Vere references found in chapters 40, 41, and 42, but I'm going to go over 42 again because I found something else. With the repeated count, 42 equals two letter T, so the double tau found in the sonnets. The numbers of the verse references are 1, 7, 10, and 16. These can be added as 1 plus 10 equaling 17, and 7 plus 10 equaling the same. Altogether, the numbers add up to 34, or LL, with the repeated count. But when read as Hebrew, 34 is 43, or VV. There's 17 verses, with 12 words between the verse number and the word 40 above, 12 being the number of letters in Edward de Vere. Something I didn't notice before was, in verse 12, if you count 17 words, there's the word 14. I've already explained how 14 can be read as 40, because with the Greek alphabet, lowercase eta looks like a lowercase n. So in verse 12, we have 1740. And if we keep counting, word 29 is oxen, short for oxenford. With gematria, the initials for Edward de Vere, EDV, equals 29. Again, the same numbers followed by 1740, or an example of De Vere's name, keep turning up. That's not random, it's design. Also, this is the page with the dot beneath the burnt offering, which I explained the significance of in video 12. It refers to Hamlet and an important event in Oxford's life. If 
we look just above chapter 42, we see there's 34 verses. 34 represents De Beers VB initials read as if Hebrew. Just below it are the words, is a king. So we have De Beers initials VB above the words, is a king. Above 34 is the word who, and above it the number 33. With Gematria, the abbreviated spelling of Edward, E-D-W-D, -D, equals 33. So acrostically, this might read Edward, who was a king, with the VB initials. And then in chapters 41 and 42, there's all those other De Beer references. Returning to 1 Samuel chapter 17, with all those 1740 spear references, remember how 55 or 55 five is VB. In verse 55, I counted the number of words. The seventh is fourth, which can also be read as 40. 740, not 1740. The Prince Tudor theory claims that Edward de Vere viewed himself as the royal consort Edward VII. I didn't know this, but I'm getting ahead of myself, so just keep this in mind. I continued counting, and king is the 34th word, or VV when read as if Hebrew, followed by the words, I cannot tell. So in verse 55, or VV, we have 740, but also king VV, I cannot tell. This reflects the same message at the end of Job 41, Edward who was a king with the two V's. The chapter for 1 Samuel 17 ends with verse 58, again 58 is 5 times 8 equaling 40. Just above 58 or 40 are the words the head and below it son art thou, 40, the head son art thou. Remember, this is all in 1 Samuel chapter 17, one of the most well-known stories of all time. Everybody knows the story of David and Goliath, and I think that's why I was chosen to encode so much. There's several 1740 spear codes, but we're also getting messages about a king. It starts at verse 55, or VV for De Beer, with a 740 code, followed by, O King, I Cannot Tell. Then 58, or 40, The Head Son Art Thou. And then I noticed between verse numbers 56 and 57 are the words whose son. These numbers have come up before. 56 with Gematria equals De Vere, and 57 equals Henry. This whole section, beginning with verse 55, is telling us something in code. It starts with 55 or VV, then we get 740, and then King I cannot tell. If De Vere thought of himself as Edward the Seventh. He would have used 740, just like when he used 1740 for the Earl of Oxford. Then acrostically, there's numbers for De Vere and Henry with the words, whose son. And then there's the multiple of 5 times 8, or 40, and 58's been used that way in the Sons and First Folio. It's saying, 40, the head son art thou. There's no doubt this chapter has Spear in 1740 or Shakespeare and Oxford references, but are these telling us that De Vere was the first in line to be king? I thought there might be something in Revelation because it's the last book of the New Testament Bible, so I looked in chapter 19. Remember, 19 equals T, or Tau, and is used all throughout these codes. The verse reference numbers for 19 are 1 and 7, or 17, and what would be verse 10 is misprinted as 20, followed by 17 again. With Gematria, 20 is the letter V, so this misprint might stand for V or Vir between the two 17s. If we turn the page, we see verse 12 begins. 12 is the number of letters in Edward de Vere. Now if we look at verse 17 and count, there's 40 words followed by the word God. So we have de Vere's number 1740 next to God. Again, this concept of God and de Vere. From the top of the page, if we count four lines, there's the word man. For in German is pronounced Vere, and in Latin the word man is also pronounced Vere. Below the number 17 are the words the sun and De Vere was sometimes referred to as Apollo, the god of the sun. And look at the word above 17, kings, plural. But also look below the verse number for 18, again the plural word kings. So if Edward De Vere was in the royal line and a king, so was Henry De Vere. And here we have their own numbers boxed within the word kings. But what really got my attention was in Numbers chapter 7, I saw this dot or point next to the word ver. 
Silver is hyphenated, beginning this line with the letters V-E-R. Like the words of burnt offering discussed in my previous video, this dot is found in my facsimile, which hasn't been cleaned up or modified. V-E-R is used to abbreviate veer, like in the word ever or evir, and it's in verse 55. Again, 55 can be read 5-5 five, five, or V-V. I thought, if this is just random ink, it's interesting that it fell right next to the abbreviation for Veer's name, which is in a verse that's numbered similar to De Veer's initials, so I started looking around. It's in chapter 7, printed in Roman numerals as V1 and 1, which can also be read as V and 2. Two Vs are De Veer's double initials. Again, the Prince Tudor theory claims that Edward De Veer viewed himself as Edward VII, and here we are in chapter 7. Let's continue. The verse reference numbers add up to 100. Again, 100 is used in the sonnets in Psalm 100 and equals the abbreviated name for Edward de Vere. There's 89 verses, and with the repeated count, 89 equals 4 Vs. 4 is Vere in German, but also this could be two sets of double V initials for Edward and Henry de Vere. Now it gets real interesting. When we look at verse 17 and count 40 words, the 40th is Prince. 1740 Prince. De Beer was the 17th Earl of Oxford, but if he thought himself as Edward VII, someone is telling us 1740's a prince. Verse number 18 is on the 20th line. 20 equals the letter V for Veer. Below it are the words, the son. Henry, the 18th Earl of Oxford, was Edward's son, so we have 1740 prince, 18 the son. After 17, I checked verse 40 and saw the word oxen. If you count back or right to left, there's 17 words followed by the verse number 40. So we have oxen, short for oxen ford, 1740. If you look along the chapter title, it reads, The Offerings of the Princes. Several verse numbers have the word offering above them, but I found it interesting that both 17 and 40 have it. Now looking back where chapter 7 begins, if we count the verse lines, line 17 reads, Two of the princes, and right below that, on line 18, is the word ox, again short for Oxenford. Is this telling us something about the 17th and 18th earls of Oxford? Were they two princes? Verse number 4, or Veer, is on line 20. 20 equals V for Veer. When we get to line 34, again there's the word ox. 34 is twice 17, but more importantly, when read as if Hebrew from right to left, it's 43, equaling VV with the repeated count. I also checked number 17. The verse reference numbers total 11. This method of counting is used elsewhere in the Bible. After 11, start counting the lines. When we get to 40, the word is Prince, followed by 1. Prince, 1. After that, there's 17 words. Below that is verse number 7 with the words for the, or for t, because h is eta, used in classical Greek for the long vowel e, 7, 40. Also, 7 is printed under the name Aaron. Aaron was the older brother of Moses, whose family had exclusive rights to make offerings on the altar of God, and I think this meant exclusive rights to the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was housed. But I think this is implying De Vere's importance as the first or eldest son. Now if we read this from verse number 7, going the other way like Hebrew, there's 17 words followed by that 40th line, Prince 1, or actually one prince, because we're reading up right to left, so to speak. One can be synonymous with first, so when we read the entire message, it's 7 for Edward the Seventh, 1740 De Vere's code number, first prince. Edward the Seventh, 1740, first prince. If De Vere was Elizabeth's first son, he would have been the first prince in the line to be king. I found more 1740 codes exactly where they should be by number, but didn't include them because it seems redundant. Obviously, someone knew you was Shakespeare and encoded it in the Bible. Was it Bacon, or did De Vere do it himself? On the cover of the Bible are two spears on opposite sides of the page. The one on the right is behind Philip, who has his back turned to us. The other on the left is by a character who's facing towards us. Some think this is Thomas, but most agree Thomas is the shady character, literally standing under the dove, the Holy Spirit, behind the Lamb, the Son of God, between St. Andrew with his cross and St. John with his cup. Why is he in the middle of such an important scene? I don't know. He's holding a mason square, so I'm sure that has something to do with it. And the two spears are likely an allusion to the spear shakers, the person or persons responsible for the works of Shakespeare and the King James Bible. 
Image-wise, is the person facing us on the left the same person turning away from us on the right? This is from the first folio, listing the names of the principal actors. First on the list is William Shakespeare. Notice the W is comprised of two separate letter Vs, one drawn over the other, not intersecting. Notice the two faces at the base of the W, looking in opposite directions. This is Janus, the Roman god of time, doorways beginning and endings. One face looks to the past, the other to the future. Alexander Waz pointed out that, after the two double Vs that make up the W, William Shakespeare's name has 17 letters. 17 letters plus 40 for the double V character is 1740, De Vere's number. So we have De Vere's number perfectly encoded within William Shakespeare's name. And here the double Vs that make up the W is printed with Janus, the god with two faces. Can the two figures with spears, one facing us, the other with his back turned, his face cloaked in shadow looking away from us, symbolize the god Janus, whose faces also look in opposite directions? Also, why is the face of Janus drawn on the letter W, De Vere's double V character? The image on the left is from the cover of John Gerard's The Herbal, or General History of Plants, published in 1597. It's believed to be the face of Edward De Vere. Please see Alexander Waugh's video, John Gerard New. I'm showing it here because compare it with the face on the Bible, the nose and the way the eyebrows turn. There's similarity. One's just older than the other. Keep in mind the bridge of the nose. There's a slight bump on the Gerard illustration, which seems to be more pronounced than the Bible engraving. This is the portrait of Oxford everyone's familiar with, younger than the engraving, obviously. If you look at the bridge on the right side of his nose, there's a pronounced highlight which isn't uncommon in paintings, but depending on the subject of the portrait, the area where the highlight on the nose is painted does vary, so Oxford did have a bump or widening at this point on the bridge of his nose, and noses grow larger as we get older, so this feature could have become more pronounced over time. Are these illustrations of the same person, the one on the right, an older man, living out the rest of his days in the English Channel on the island of Mercy, suggested by one of the Prince Tudor theories? This could explain why the word mercies is the 17th word once the dedication of the King James Bible begins, and the 57th word, if you count from the very beginning, 57 equals 17 plus 40, or 1740. Also in Isaiah chapter 2, where De Vere and Shakespeare quotes can be found, the title of the page begins with Mercy Promised. And on the last page of The Tempest, the cryptic and out of order first play of the first folio about a man now living on an island who had once been a duke but neglected his duty studying the arts of magic and writing is magic, has mercy printed at the beginning of the 34th line. Remember, 34 or twice 17 is equal to LL with the repeated count. But, read as of Hebrew, it's 43, which equals VV, De Vere's double V initials. Do these two figures represent Janus? And is that the face of an older Edward De Vere towards the end of his life, living incognito on an island called Mercy? That would explain a lot. Whether you believe the Prince Tudor theory or not, the portrait of Oxford bears a striking resemblance to this portrait of Elizabeth. I truly believe the man was Shakespeare, and I believe Alexander Waugh's theory that Henry de Vere was the son of Henry Rosalie, but was Edward de Vere royalty. That's what the codes in the King James Bible suggest. It's my understanding that the evidence for the Prince Tudor theory is thin, and I'm not advocating, but when I see codes like 1740 Prince, 1740 First Prince, and Double V as a King, with other relevant numbers also connecting information to Oxford, I don't know what to make of it. Someone definitely encoded that Edward de Vere was Shakespeare in the 1611 King James Bible. Maybe he did it himself. And maybe these other ones are simply telling us that he was the king of writers, of plays and verse. I know I've ventured into unpopular territory here, even for some Oxfordians, and I don't want to push the Prince Tudor theory. But if someone wanted to encode that information, this is how it could have been done. In closing, I want to thank Ron Raphael, who does not believe the Prince Tudor theory for the suggestions and information he's provided me. Currently, he's working on a book called Secrets of Shakespeare's First Folio, in which he breaks down codes and puzzles he's found throughout the text that reveal Edward de Vere was Shakespeare. Thank you for watching.